Each week at this time, we do something called a community moment. It's a chance for someone from the Oasis community to get up and share a thought for the day. Um, sometimes it's the story of your journey to free thought. Sometimes it's an idea from a book you've read, a movie you've seen. This week, uh, we have a member of our board who's done them before, and he's always awesome. So let's welcome back for this week's community moment, uh, Eric Anderson. Eric, oh, there you go. Thanks, Mike. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about investing in art, and I'm really excited to talk about this topic because it's a topic which sits at the intersection of two of my favorite things. The first one I'm sure you all know is finance, and the second one you may not know about me is I really appreciate art and art appreciation. Um, so this is based on a talk that I gave last Thursday uh, at an art show, and I've tailored it for this group because I'm not trying to sell anybody art here. And I'm also going to tell you some things that I didn't tell anybody there, which is you don't need a lot of money to collect art, really. Um, some of the best places, some of the best pieces I've ever found have been from local artists. Um, you can search for them on the internet, uh, you can find them at local art shows, you can find them in our audience here today. I know we have a number of artists that are members of our group, uh, and interestingly enough, Coming up in a couple of weeks is one of my favorite events. It's called the Houston Art Crawl, if anybody's ever been to that. And it's an opportunity uh, for local artists in Houston, um, you know, whether they do this professionally or whether they just do it as a hobby, to present their art uh, for sale. And there is no budget that cannot find some beautiful locally produced art at Houston Art Crawl. So that's Saturday, November 21st, if anybody's interested in going to that. Um, also, I've had limited success just searching on websites like Etsy and much more limited success searching on eBay. Uh, there tends to be a lot of what I call hotel art, which is just very bland, unexciting bowls of fruit and chips and whatnot. And I mean, maybe that's your thing, that's fine, right? You, you, that may be what you appreciate, and if so, those are great resources. But um, I have had success finding some beautiful art that I really appreciate on that too. Um, you know, the talk is about art investing, right? Um, and investing is kind of a, a cold subject because it's all about money, right? But what is more important from my perspective when you're buying art from local artists is that you are supporting an industry which I believe is largely taken for granted. I don't think people appreciate just how much time and talent goes into producing art. It can take dozens of hours to produce a single painting, and of course it takes years, if not decades, for an artist to reach a level to where they can even produce that painting. Um, it's, it's something that everybody values, and I think we should show our support for that. My love of art has grown with me from a young age. My mom was and still is an artist, and our house was always filled with beautiful original paintings. Not just paintings by my mom, which I really appreciate, but my mom and dad also collected art from other artists. So there was not an empty surface anywhere in the house by the time I left home that wasn't filled with a painting. And that's something I really took for granted until I left home. And I realized that I enjoyed so much being around art. And so when Jess and I bought our first home, we made the difficult decision to fill it with original art. It really is a difficult decision because I'll tell you, when you buy a home, I'm sure all of you know this, there's an enormous temptation to put stuff in it, to make it feel complete, to make it feel whole, and you, you want something on your walls, right? And so for very little money and for very little time, you can go to Walmart or Target, and you can buy something to put on your walls which resembles art. <laughs> but in reality, it's not art, and it's not worth anything, and you'll probably grow tired of it within a couple of years. Rather than do that, might I suggest you take a lifetime being patient, and having self-control, and slowly acquiring paintings, which is what I've done. So I can never predict when or where I'll buy the next painting. I can never predict how long it's gonna take to fill up all the empty spaces on my walls, but my walls have taken on an unpredictable and fascinating evolution as each new painting is added. And, you know, it's, it's turned into kind of a pastime for me. Um, I, I've got this, this new hobby, usually after a couple of drinks, where I'll just wander around my house and enjoy the beautiful paintings. Look at each one, right? As if, as if I'm in my own private gallery. And, and, and when, I, when I look at each painting, it evokes in my mind the memory of how I came to acquire it, the attraction that first drew me to it, and the pride I feel of owning something beautiful that I know the rest of the world can only hope to one day own a copy of. 
<laughs> True. So why would I leave out my passion for investing from my passion for art? After all, the feeling of value for art is a shared human trait. And where there is value, there is money. Yet so many people continue to see art as an expense, when I think at the very least you should be looking at art as an asset. It's not an expense. When you buy a painting, yes, you are parting with your hard-earned dollars, but you are gaining something that has retainable value, that could potentially grow in value, if you're lucky enough. I think a great example of this, I always talk about my mother-in-law in these talks. We have a great relationship, by the way. <laughs> she just has so many good stories, I can't help it. Um, many years ago, my mother-in-law was in New Orleans on vacation. <laughs> And, you know, she was just traveling, you know, window shopping, right? And she wandered into a gallery, and she saw a painting of a blue dog. It was an original work, and uh, she thought, wow, this is such a beautiful piece. I wonder how much it is. Oh, it's $2,000. I wasn't planning on spending $2,000 today. I'm going to make the fiscally responsible decision, and I'm going to walk past the painting, right? Well, it just so happened that that was an original work by George Rodrigue, a then-unknown artist. Should my mother-in-law change her mind and today decide to buy a blue dog painting from George Rodriguez, she should expect to spend around $175,000. This is, this is a rare occurrence, okay? Like, don't, don't go rushing out buying paintings thinking they're gonna run up in value like this. George Rodriguez is, is an exceptionally talented artist who has found an audience that is very appreciative of his work. Um, it's not something that happens every day. But um, there are those out there that will tell you that the value of art is completely arbitrary. I mean, after all, why should one painting of a bowl of fruit be worth so much more than another painting of a bowl of fruit, right? I don't get it. It is good from an investment perspective to think of art as shares in the artist, in the same way you'd buy shares of a company. Um, investing in art is investing in the artist. You're seeding the artist's capital to be able to continue their career in art. And I have an example of this too. My favorite artist, a local artist, his name is Jimmy Houston. He started painting part-time, just as a hobby. He had a regular full-time job and he was painting part-time. And he decided, you know, hey, I've got enough of these paintings. I think I'm gonna take them to the Houston Art Crawl and see if uh, any of them will sell. And he sold all of them on the first day. <laughs> and then he met with some gallery owners and he got into some galleries and uh, he eventually got to the point where he was able to quit his job and become an artist full time. And that is because he was seeded the capital to do so by people who were willing to purchase his art. Now as investors in Jimmy Houston, those people shared in the success of buying his paintings, which are now worth a lot more than what they paid for them. So it's really not a bad analogy to think of it that way. Also art, like other traditional asset classes, are driven by supply and demand. Unlike other traditional asset classes, supply isn't much of a concern. Um, like I mentioned earlier, it takes a lot of time and talent to produce a painting. So the concern that an artist is going to suddenly flood the market with new shares, with hundreds of thousands of new paintings, is not practical. Um, I should put an asterisk on that, because that is really only true with originals and not with prints. It is my personal philosophy only to buy original paintings, not prints. I think it's great if you buy prints. If you buy prints, you're definitely supporting the artist. I don't think you should look at prints as an investment, though. Um, even if they are a limited numbered edition, they'll say, okay, you're number 52 out of 150 on this. We're only gonna make 150. Well, what they don't tell you is we're gonna change just one tiny thing about it. Maybe it's the size, maybe it's the artist's signature, maybe it's sealed with the artist's blood, and we're gonna produce another 150, another 150, and they're, so, and they're gonna keep doing that until they can't sell anymore. So there, there's no resale value to prints, in my opinion. Um, so really what happens with art is that the focus fundamentally is then on demand which is what makes art investing so much fun, because demand is in the value of the purchaser. It's how much people value that painting, whether they think it's clever or beautiful or whatnot. And so the best way to value art is really to buy what you love, what speaks to you, what you think is beautiful, what look good in your house. It's not unlikely that somebody else feels the same way about it. Um, now, art has a number of challenges, and one of those is liquidity challenges. Uh, it's very infrequent that you have opportunities to buy and sell art. Um, if you love a certain painting and somebody else owns it, and they don't want to sell it, you can't buy it. There's no exchange for that painting. There's only one, right? And if you want a painting and you want to sell it, and you can't find someone who's interested in that particular artist and that particular painting, you can't sell it. So um, it's good to think about it as a long-term investment, 
And it's kind of similar to real estate in the sense of its uniqueness. If there's a house you want to buy and it's not for sale, you can't buy it. <laughs> you can certainly make an offer, but nobody has to sell it to you. Um, so think about art as a really long-term investment. My mom always made this um, joke about, you know, art is only ever worth anything after the artist dies, which is not true, by the way, but it speaks to the idea that art it really is a long-term investment. Don't buy a painting and expect to flip it in a month. You know, hold on to it for years, maybe even decades. Maybe it's something you pass down in your family. Um, the illiquidity of art has, for me, made my art collecting a long-term investment, one in which I will not measure my success in my trades until years after they have occurred. My good investments may someday be paintings I sell for a profit, but my best investments will no doubt be the paintings I choose never to sell. Thank you. <laughs>